Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you this morning? If you're here for the first time, welcome. And to all my regular viewers, welcome. Welcome to From Recovery to Remission, where each morning I give you some information that will help you understand the neurobiology and physiology of what happens to us on the inside with complex PTSD and various factors that have happened in our life. And then you're able to take the information away and use it and apply it into your own individual life in order that you can help move your recovery into remission. My name's Linda. I'm a complex trauma recovery coach in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, take this information to your therapist and or your trauma recovery coach. There's quite a number around the world now. And let them help you develop personalized strategies. If there's one thing that's a definite with complex PTSD recovery is that we do not do it alone. The uh, childhood, adverse childhood experiences, the ACEs, did not happen alone. And we need to also interact interpersonally in order that our recovery can move to remission. Now, this morning, I this is really super important information. It's information that can create a deep awareness internally for us and externally, and it can help us change, or it, not only does it help us understand more deeply what happens with complex PTSD, but it can also give us the information to help us change our direction and how we're going to chart our own direction in our recovery. The second thing I want to share with you after the information this morning is how to start. So here's all the information, but how do I start? Where do I start? How can I begin to integrate this information into my day-to-day -day life in order that it not only is a bunch of information that is true based on neuroscience, it's also information that I can take to help impact my recovery to remission journey. But it's also information that I can take so that I can begin to be willing to change what's happening in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, so first part... So what is actually happening for us around procrastination when we've got complex PTSD? The first thing to understand or build an awareness of in your day-to-day -day life is that we have disorganised attachment. So in our childhood, our brain was wired in such a manner that we don't have a natural order or a natural ability to put our day-to-day -day life into an order. So it can feel very disorganized in our, internally. Uh, and sometimes internally we want to hide that from the world, but we need to be able to say, okay, this is what's happening. Uh, I am unable to put things in an order naturally because I didn't learn how to do it automatically from my childhood surrounds. But now as an adult, now that I have this information, I'm going to be able to say, right, where is where is it or what part of my day is it that I need to teach myself how to put order into my day, how to feel a sense of importance around what putting order into my day because nor a normal healthy childhood would have included a, a parent saying, oh, wow, you've done that. That's great. You know, either when you've achieved something as a kid or you've done something, you know, even even down to things like being able to do the dishes or housework, you know, the normal response is, that's great, well done. And a child develops that sense of importance. Oh, wow, this is good, you know, and it builds within us. I'm achieving something here. We don't have that naturally as adults when we haven't been given that order to embed into our whole neurobiological, physiological, and all the way down to our emotions and our ability to attach in an organized manner. So we have to be willing to give that to ourselves. Now, 
The second most important part too is looking at our brain as a muscle that we can train, all right? That, I want to repeat that because it's a very important factor and it certainly was in, and is in my recovery to remission journey is that our brain is a muscle that we can train and neuroscience proves it through neuroplasticity that if we're willing to do the work we can create new neural pathways in our life. So if our brain is a muscle that can be trained and we're the ones that train it, how do we begin to train our brain? Actually, it reminds me of that movie title, you know, How to, How to Train a Dragon. Well, you know, it's not quite that involved, but <laughs> we can absolutely retrain our brain. And how we do that is by being willing to do the little things first. So even though everything to us can feel like, um, oh, actually, before we go there, this I'll go into what's the third thing that we lack a timekeeper. So the overwhelming feeling that this will go on or take forever or last forever comes from our childhood and comes from things like physical, sexual and emotional abuse because as children we have no conscious timekeeper. We didn't know time. Uh, and so the abuse or the adverse childhood experiences feel like they will go on forever. And as we go into adulthood, we feel like everything that we attempt to do will go on forever. Like even down to things like, oh, I've got to do the dishes. Well, it's hard to have the motivation to do the dishes when we feel like it will go on forever. Now, this is not something that we chose, but it's something that we can choose to go, oh my goodness, finally, it makes sense. Uh, when I learnt this information, I was like, oh, thank goodness. You know, it's the, the internal struggle has seemed like it's been all my fault, but it's not all my fault that I've come out of childhood with my brain being wired in this manner. So what we do is we procrastinate tasks that give us some discomfort. So we do not feel at ease with and are fearful of or find boring. Okay, so if we feel any of those things towards doing the dishes, doing the laundry, uh, and for me, feeling that things are boring and that they'll last forever is like... Um, it's it's so draining. I've got to be honest. Hi, Laurel. Uh, it it does feel like having a shower will go on forever, and until we can identify that this this is the feeling of what it feels like and why I procrastinate, then we'll keep procrastinating. Okay. But we have to come back to the first three steps all the time and remember that it's from disorganized attachment. We have to learn to organize it. We have to look at our brain as a muscle that we begin working out. And we have to understand that we lack a timekeeper because of this. So where do we go from here? When we put all these pieces of the puzzle together, where are we going to go from here now that we go, Oh, finally, it makes sense, all right? So what do we do to break free? One of the first things that it's so important to do is order our day with time. Now, I don't mean set your whole day down and go, right, it's going to be like military-like precision. Because we're learning to exercise our brain, we only want to do that in 10 to 15 minute increments. So if we were to look, look at if we started exercising, in order to create new neural pathways, if we started off with more than 10 or 15 minutes, we'd soon give in to the feeling of this is going to take forever and I'm just not going to be able to do it. All right? So we have to be willing to build up our resilience in 10 to 15 minute time slots, all right? So I would do, when I first began this journey, I 
at this point with this, I would give myself 10 to 15 minute things that I knew I could complete in 10 or 15 minutes. Now, <laughs> the interesting thing that happens is we soon learn that a lot of the things that we thought would take longer than 10 or 15 minutes actually take less. All right. Um, affirm. So make a daily affirmation of I am someone who gets things done. All right. Now, if you're sitting in a chair and you can't move and your body's in fight, flight, freeze mode and you're frozen and it's like I can't move, then you can say I am someone who gets stuff done and I am going to move my body and it will feel incredibly hard to move your body, all right? Because remember, it originates in the brain. Everything floods our body and it feels hard to move, but we can move it. So we need to be willing to do even just one thing and say, right, I understand that all of this is happening internally, but I'm stronger than this and I'm able to get up and just do the one next thing. And that's how I started. My one next thing was just being able to get out of bed. So the day I got out of bed four times. So it was a case of I'd get out of bed, sit at a computer, uh, type in a group because I couldn't speak. And it would take me forever to remember words. And then I'd be so tired, I'd have to go back to bed. So the day I did that four times, it was like, oh, my goodness. And I didn't have any of this information at the time. I was like, I'm going to win this battle. All right. So it does take time and it does take energy to create new neural pathways. But it is absolutely doable. So we do want to remember to acknowledge the forever feeling around tasks that we have to do, right? Acknowledge it, own it, say, yes, it's there. Oh my goodness, it feels like if I have a shower, it's going to take forever. And it sits in your, in your stomach and you go, it's going to take forever and I'm not going to get my other work done that I want to do that I <laughs> actually enjoy doing. And so then you go, ah, okay, this forever feeling isn't the truth, all right? The truth is if I go and have a shower or go and make some something to eat, I am going to be able to do everything I want to do because I get stuff done, all right? Again, and another affirmation that I use a lot too is I am safe, all right? It's helping our thoughts remain focused in the now, and that's where we need to begin to build our mental fitness around is in the now. Uh, one of the best things that you can do in this situation is time how long it does actually take you to do the things that you've procrastinated about because when you do that, you go, oh my goodness, that didn't even take as long as I thought or I felt it would. And it's incredible how it changes our reality when we realize the order, the time. It, it just, it blows my mind sometimes um, how much this has impacted my life by understanding this, is that it doesn't take long to do the dishes, but geez, it felt like it was going to take forever. And eventually, not straight up, eventually I learned to laugh and go, oh my goodness, this has been driving my life for so long and I didn't even know. So it's a willingness to examine what's happening for us internally as well. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is record your rest times. If there's times when you need to sit down and rest, times when you need to sit down because you know that when you sit down, you're just going to pass out and go to sleep. Record how long that rest time takes and do it diligently because as you do it diligently, then you're able to begin to take back and reclaim and say, okay, around this time of day, this is how long I normally rest for. I'm going to set an alarm today for instead of an hour, 45 minutes, and start reclaiming the whole energy around, right, this is what I can do, and this is how I'm going to retrain my brain muscle that I want to reclaim my day-to-day -day life. 
we can teach our kids this stuff, okay? Uh, I teach my youngest son a lot of this as well, and it changes his life. Uh, he struggled with suicide since uh, 16 years of age, so around four years, and the more he takes on board uh, the information that he needs from what I teach, the more he's able to reclaim his life, okay? And is it easy? No, but is it worth it? Every damn breath, it's worth it. Make sure you record the time that your chores take and so that you can reinforce with your thoughts that the feeling that this is going to take forever is not the truth. The truth is it only takes five minutes to do the dishes or, you know, five minutes to have a shower or ten minutes or, you know, five minutes to put a load of washing on. Uh, get It's like retraining our emotions that this is not the truth, the order of my day, this is the truth, and this is what I'm going to work with as an individual, okay? I know this can change uh, how you begin to reclaim your life, all right, and begin to move from recovery into remission. I know because I live this every single day as well, and it's not easy, but it's absolutely worth it to get our lives back despite what our neurobiology and physiology would have us believe, all right? And remember, have compassion. This happened to us in childhood and we had no idea. But now that we're adults, we can understand it. And the second thing I want to just explain quickly to you this morning is attitude towards everything and everyone is so important attitude towards ourselves, to have compassion and understanding that whilst we didn't create these circumstances, I can be compassionate and be willing to teach myself a new way of living. Uh, and our attitude towards other people on the journey, journey, kindness and compassion and understanding and understanding that our perception goes offline as well every time we're triggered. Uh, I share a lot of information around the internet and I can tell you that most people are very, very thankful for it. But there's always the odd one or two who will attack, all right? We need to be willing to take on board information and say, how can I use this myself to change my life? How can I be willing to change my attitude and go, right, even though the neurobiology is driving my physiology and it's hard work, how can I be willing to change my attitude and have some kindness and compassion and put in the work that's needed? Because if we don't put in the work, there's no one who can move us, there's no one who can inspire us, there is no one who can help us change things, no professional uh, no friend who can help us change things. We're in the driver's seat when it comes to our attitude and our willingness to put information into place and change our day-to-day -day life. Okay, I hope this helped this morning. Uh, please watch the video again and again and again so that your brain as a muscle can absorb that this is normal for us and we're about changing up our normal. All right, I wish you a beautiful day in your recovery to remission journey. Reach out if you need help, and I'm always, always willing to direct you to any information that I can find for you or to do a video for you because I, out of all of us, definitely understand what it's like to lose your life and to be bedridden and not be able to walk, talk, or communicate what's going on, and I know how important this information is in our recovery to remission journey. So many professionals don't have this information yet, and the more that we can share this information with others who are on this journey, the, the greater kindness that we're showing them that there is hope. There is always hope for us to be able to turn our life around. Have a gorgeous day and I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now.